Hello and welcome to the advanced tutorial video for the updated profiler feature in the latest version of FMOD Studio 1.06. In the previous video, we covered over basic UI and usability of the profiler, so if you haven't used the profiler before, you should definitely check out that video before following along with this one, just so you know what I'm talking about. In this video, we will demonstrate the cool stuff about the profiler and how it fits in with your project workflow. Now, we're going to have a talk about what the profiler API functionality is for and how it benefits your workflow. I'm also going to show you how to troubleshoot and diagnose issues and audio bugs within your FMOD Studio projects and games. And I'm also going to show you how to make use of player style recording to make sure your mix is appropriate for every playthrough type and that it always sounds amazing. Now, I just wanted to quickly tell you about how the API capture feature in the profiler is going to upgrade your workflow. I feel that the people who are gonna benefit most from this update to the profiler, other than everyone, is actually the remote sound designers. This upgrade is going to help you become a more integrated part of your team and actually be able to work better with your production team and QA team, which is going to be awesome. Now, you don't have to rebuild, compile, or play the game all the time just to be able to do your job. This is going to save you build and compile time, of course. We've all had those moments where you've forgotten to make one tiny little change in studio and then you've had to build the whole game again and it takes two hours. With the API capture feature, you're going to be able to iterate without needing to do that every single time for every single little change. And you can also get your pro gamers in QA to play through and use their sessions to iterate or demonstrate. So that's going to save you time in actually dragging your character through levels and getting to the end just to test one tiny little bug that happens when the boss is beating your player into the ground. The profiler update is also going to help you with the way that you diagnose and log bugs. So it'll let you fix issues in studio before compiling them into the game, but it also gives you a history of bugs. If you decide to keep your profiler sessions, you can go back in time and actually check how issues have changed or how bugs have changed and whether they're actually recurring or not just by having a look at your profiler sessions and comparing all of the data that you get and seeing whether they actually are a similar or related bug. So that'll be useful for your QA team. Now, the other thing that it'll really help you do is actually mix and master across player styles and across time. And it'll make sure that you can keep mixing efficiently and also delivering the best mixes that you can when you need to. That's going to be the coolest thing, I think, that you'll always have sizzle reel content on hand, ready to go whenever the big boss actually needs a demo or you need stakeholders to be demonstrated to. You can just bust out the best sizzle reel content that you can. That will actually be very easy for you with the profiler. Now, enough talk. Let's actually get stuck into um, troubleshooting because I know that that's going to be a really big thing for you guys. Now I have my FMOD Studio project ready to go and my Unreal Engine 4 project ready to go as well. Now you recognize this project, don't you? It's from the Unreal Engine 4 video tutorial series. Now what I've actually done is I haven't done anything to these projects at all. They are straight off the website and you can go and grab them and start mucking around with the profiler with them as well. And I totally encourage you to do that if you want to have the experience of using the profiler with a game outside of FMOD Studio. What I'll do is I'll just quickly show you the profiler needs the banks to be built freshly to actually be able to make use of the API capture feature. So just in the preferences, I'll show you that I've got build folder set to the Unreal Engine 4 banks folder there. So you can see the FMOD folder, that's where your banks need to go. And I'll just also show you that if I hit build, Unreal Engine 4 is definitely seeing my updates there, which is fantastic. I'll actually start playing the game. Then I will jump back into FMOD, open my profiler window, create a new session. Now this is the first time we're actually troubleshooting for this particular project. So I'll just call it playthrough one. And then we can live connect to the game. Localhost is fine if you're running it on off your computer just like I am. And then you hit record and it starts recording. Now, we all remember that the master boss is the only boss that actually loads up when you start a new profiler session, but profiler is so smart that it actually picks up on all the events that you have active in your whatever it's connected to. So when we stop recording, it'll actually populate with all the events that we've been working with. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run around and have a listen. 
So I'm just listening to make sure that, you know, my levels are right and that everything's actually operating as I designed it. You can hear my character sounds, vocalizations. I'm gonna have a listen to my reverb. Awesome. I might just double check my tornado as well. All right, so I can hear that the tornado is ducking my character sound. Definitely. Throw a grenade. Oop. Throw a grenade and what I'm listening for is the interplay between the two snapshots. So the tornado snapshot and the grenade snapshot that has the ducking there. And I can actually hear that the wind sounds and the tornado sounds aren't actually being ducked. So what I might do, I will endeavor to fix this. Actually jump out of Unreal and go back to Studio. It's already stopped the recording for us, which is great. You can see it's auto-populated with all the events that were active. It's also great. So we'll just find where the grenade effect right here, where it was active. There we go, levels. One quick and easy way to check to see whether there was ducking happening is whether there's actually visible ducking in the levels here. And I can see that there is definitely not any visible ducking. So what I'll actually do is I will jump over into my mixer window straight away because I have a feeling that it has something to do with the mix. We definitely heard it was just the environment ambience in the tornado that wasn't being ducked. Now I'll just show you. In order to fix the ducking, we'll either have to double check the hierarchy of our snapshots and we can see that the bomb filter is actually stacked on top there. So that's just telling us that ducking will take precedence over anything else we've got going on at the same time. So I'll just double check whether the ambience group is scoped in, which it is. The issue might have been that it wasn't scoped in at all, but we can see that it's not actually active for any ducking. So if we pull the volume down, that'll actually duck when the snapshot is active. We can save, we can build, and then instead of actually jumping over into Unreal or launching onto a console or doing any sort of rigmarole like that to double check to see whether my fix has gone through, what I'll actually do is I'll hit play. Because my API capture feature is on, turned on just here, you can tell from this little button being highlighted, I can hear ducking. I can hear ducking. That's great. One thing that might be a little bit confusing is that you can see that this, um, these visuals here and the metering hasn't changed at all. Now, I'm just here to tell you that this is the recorded output of the game from UE4. It's not actually any changes that have come from Studio lumped on top of that recording. So what I'll do to demonstrate, and you can definitely always double check that your changes have come through from Studio, is by turning the API capture off, you'll play back the recording straight from the game. So this is before. You can hear all that wind right on top of the grenade effect. Double tap stop, turn API back on and have another listen. And you can hear that ducking is working now. That tells me that my issue is fixed and that because I've built all of that into my banks and Unreal picked up those changes, next time I play through my project in Unreal, it'll actually sound just like it does in Studio right now in Profiler. So that's how you're gonna save a bit of time and be able to work a bit more efficiently when it comes to your troubleshooting. And the same goes for mixing as well. So if I was to muck around with the levels in the mixer, um, those changes would actually go through in the banks and then be picked up in Unreal. Now that's the really quick little demo of how to do bug checking and troubleshooting with the profiler. But what I want to do is quickly demonstrate to you hypothetically how we can work with player styles and iterative mixing to actually enhance our workflow when it comes to post-processing with FMOD Studio. In a situation where we have a hypothetical shooter game, we might have a couple of different ways that um, a player could play the game and we need to make sure that the mix for each one of those players sounds just as fantastic for the player that plays really fast and really loud or really slow and really quiet or straight down the middle as well. So what I'll do is um, I'm just gonna show you. What you can do is you can make use of your QA team to 
play through the game in a number of different playthrough types and pass on to you like a library of FMOD Studio profiler sessions to use as reference of the optimal mix state for each play type as your project progresses. I'll give you three examples here. The fast, loud, slow, quiet, and also average playthrough. Now, when you utilize your QA team to record these different playthrough types, what you're essentially doing is you're creating situations where you're testing for different extremes of the game sound. So your fast, loud playthrough might actually be someone that runs through the levels with the rocket launchers and grenades. So you're double checking that the mix never gets too busy and that the sub bass is never too heavy or overpowering or too crunchy from distortion or anything like that. Your slow quiet playthrough might be someone who plays more like a spy or uses their sniper rifle a lot. So in this playthrough type, what you're listening for is that the mix never gets too boring or quiet, that it's always orally interesting to you. In your average playthrough type, that might emulate your everyday player that does a little bit of this, does a little bit of that, but you always want to make sure that the mix is equally as exciting exciting for them as well. What I would be doing is keeping these three playthrough types on hand and just referring back to them all the time to make sure I've got a benchmark of what an optimal mix at each playthrough style actually sounds like. This also means that whenever you need various types of demo material, you've got it there in your profiler all the time ready to go, which is pretty exciting. Now, I hope that these work through hints and tips have really helped you get more perspective on how you could use the profiler within your workflow. I hope that this has all been really super useful for you and everyone from FMOD and Firelight Technologies hopes that you have heaps of fun with this new version of FMOD Studio 1.06 as well. Have a great day, guys, and we will hopefully see you later. Thank you. Bye.